Good morning, fellow quantum boys. Just like promised, here's the bonus video regarding the quantum mechanical harmonic oscillator. And in this bonus video, we want to derive this bad boy right here, AN. And just like before, this is going to be quite some work. So at first, I would like to prove a little identity regarding those ladder operators down here. So those are just some identities we are going to need. Um, if we take the improper integral from minus infinity to infinity of some conjugate function f right here, it's just some wave function, and we need it to be normalizable, square integrable, and then a plus minus times g, which is also just a wave function, dx. This is the same as saying we are having the improper integral from minus infinity to infinity of a minus plus. So this thing changed, that's called the Hermitian conjugate, and then f, but this whole thing, conjugate, times g dx. So that's what we want to show now. It's going to be quite important. I'm going to tell you why in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and get started and let's plug all the definitions into here. So that means we're having the improper integral of f conjugate and then a plus minus is nothing but. What we can do, we can plug the definition of this um, operator into here to turn this around a bit. So a plus minus is also nothing but 1 over the square root term. I'm just writing it like that for simplification purposes. And then minus plus and we are having h times del x plus m omega x. So much chalk is flying around it. I'm a coke head probably. No, I'm a chalk head. <laughs> okay, and we can plug this stuff into here. So 1 over this square root and also minus plus h del x plus m omega x g dx. And what we can do, we can use the line linearity of the integral and break this up a little bit into two integrals. And also we can take this common factor 1 over the square root stuff to the outside. So this is equivalent to saying, oh no, this is just not equivalent. It's not a statement right here. So 1 over the square root and then times an integral going from minus infinity to infinity of minus plus. h is just a constant, so we can bring it in front of this thing right here. Minus plus h and then f conjugate del x g dx and then positive this next term right here. Integral from minus infinity to infinity of m omega x, interchanging it, they are just constants right here f conjugate g dx. Okay, great. And what we can do now, we can use integration by parts on this right here. So that's something we can do. Um, that's just a factor. We can bring it to the outside technically. So integration by parts. Something to differentiate, something to integrate. It would be good to integrate del x times g. So the differential of x uh, of g. And integrating this leaves us just with g in that case. And now we need to differentiate f conjugate. So f conjugate, differentiate, and don't forget your pluses and minus. This is just going to give us del x of f conjugate. And we can plug all this new information into here. This is now 1 over the square root, and then times. So the first part is just this right here multiplied. Don't forget your factor of minus plus h. So this is f conjugate times g from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, then don't forget your negative. We are having a new integral now. So negative integral from minus infinity to infinity of minus plus h. And then now we have del x of f conjugate times g dx plus this last integral right here plus dot dot dot. Just like I said before, those are wave functions. And one of the boundary conditions for wave function is that they are square integrable. That also means that they are going to converge. So they are normalizable. That means in the limit when x approaches infinity or minus infinity, they are going to go to zero. So this whole thing is just zero now. And we are going to end up with this chunk right here. One over the square root. Integral from minus infinity to infinity of this is going to be um, the change of the 
uh, signs right here. Minus and minus become positive, and minus and positive become negative. So we are having um, plus minus h del x f conjugate g dx plus all the other stuff here. Integral, don't forget your parentheses of m omega x f conjugate g dx. And we are basically done. So all that's really left is to use linearity of the integral and bring those together. So that's the last step in the process and we can also bring this constant to the inside now. So we now end up with an integral going from minus infinity to infinity of. So bringing this in here and putting those together, factoring out those terms right here, leaves us with 1 over the square root stuff. And then plus minus h del x plus m omega x times f. And if you take a closer look, um, I'm going to write it here at first, but if you take a closer look, this right here is a real valued function. Also this factor is, is real valued. So taking the conjugate wouldn't change anything. So what we can do, we can take the conjugate of this whole thing right here and it wouldn't change anything. Times g dx. And if you take a closer look, this is exactly what we wanted to show. This right here is the conjugate of a plus minus. So this is now the integral going from minus infinity to infinity of a minus plus, in that case, f and then conjugate times g dx. And that was just the first part. We are going to move on now. So why have we done something weird like this here? So don't forget, those were called ladder operators in the first place. So if we applied a ladder operator, for example, a plus to the wave function, psi of n, then we ended up with some new wave function, psi n plus one. But the thing is, those are just proportional. So we don't know what this is exactly. We are still having some random factor we don't know anything about. I'm going to call it cn. Same thing is going to happen if you use the lowering operator on psi n. So a minus psi n is going to result in some proportional wave function dn psi n minus 1. So we have found this out in the last video. Okay, how are we going to continue now? Well, we can make use of this right here, of this identity. So why not square integrate this function right here, this wave function. So integral from minus infinity to infinity of a plus psi n, but the conjugate of that thing, and then times the normal wave function, a plus psi n. It's just like normalization, dx. Well, how does this help? We can make use of this identity now to track this ladder operator completely to the front and take the conjugate of that. So ending up with the integral from minus infinity to infinity of a plus um, a minus a plus. So we need to track it completely to the front and then the square integral of this thing right here. The absolute value square of this wave function psi n. But does this even help? Well, we can make use of some other formulas here. So this formula right here, for example. Don't forget what our Schrödinger equation actually was. We have the Hamilton operator times the wave function of n, for example, is equal to some energy level at that point times psi n. So that was the original eigenvalue problem. We can plug all the information in we had down here. So that's equivalent to saying we have the Hamiltonian, which is h omega uh, times. And now, what do we have? We're having this relationship right here. Um, yeah, it doesn't quite matter what we take. Uh, for example, a minus, a plus in that case, because we are taking a look at this right here. a minus a plus minus one half psi n is now equal to, what's the nth energy state? The nth energy state is just this right here, those discrete energy states, n plus one half h times omega psi n. And now we can compare coefficients because those terms are equal on both sides. That also means that a minus a plus minus one half must be equal to n plus one half. That also means that a minus a plus is nothing but n plus one, adding one half on both sides. So that also means that this thing right here 
is equal to, well, we can bring this to the outside. It's just going to be a constant. So n plus 1 times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of this square integrated wave function. So that's just something that holds. But don't forget what it also is. We know that this thing, square integrated, is just this thing, square integrated. So I hope you can see where all this comes from. It's a lot of information I know. It's kind of abstract, to be honest. So this is just going to be a constant. So we can take the absolute value square to the outside. So Cn, absolute value squared, times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of psi n plus 1 square integrated in that case. And now we can once again compare coefficients and we are going to notice that this thing right here must be equal. So Cn squared must be equal to n plus 1. Now we can take the square root, but we have the absolute value of Cn right here, so we need to take the positive branch. So that also means that Cn is nothing but positive square root n plus 1. You can do the same spiel with the other one right here, and you are going to end up with the n being equal to the positive square root of n. And that's nice, so we have found those factors right here. Um, and all that's really interesting for our purpose to find out the ans of raising this thing all the time is to find um, the cn right here. So what you can do, we can plug this in. a plus times psi n is now nothing but this factor right here, square root n plus 1, psi n plus 1. And we can divide both sides by this right here. And this element of natural numbers not equal to 0, never. So that also means that psi n plus 1 of x is now nothing but 1 over square root n plus 1 a plus psi n. And why not plug in some values for n, for example, and see what we get. Maybe we are going to notice a pattern or something. So if you plug in 0 for the n, that's the lowest state possible. We are going to end up with psi 1 being equal to 1 over. This is just square root of run, uh, 1 in that case. And then a plus psi naught. So that's the first state. OK, and yeah, that's something that holds. We have found this out before, that this right here holds. Why not do it for n equals to 1? So for n equals to 1, we end up with psi of 2 in that case. It's 1 over square root. 1 plus 1 is just 2. a plus psi 1. But we know what psi 1 is. Psi 1 is nothing but 1 over square root of 1 times a plus times psi naught. So we are going to end up with 1 over square root. We can bring those 1 over square roots together to 2 times 1, which is just 2 factorial. Maybe that's the pattern. We don't know. And then a plus squared, psi naught. Let's do a last iteration. If n is equal to 2, we end up with psi 3 being equal to 1 over square root of 3 in that case, a plus psi 2. But we know what psi 2 is. Let's try this thing right here. So 1 over square root 3 times 2 times 1. OK. And then a plus to the third power times psi naught. And in general, we can generalize this. Maybe you can use induction or something. Maybe that helps. We can say in general that the nth wave function with respect to x is nothing but 1 over square root n factorial times a plus to the nth power psi naught of x. And you see, um, where is it? Maybe I can, yeah. OK, so you see this thing right here is equal to this thing right here. So that means our a n is indeed equal to that right here. So we found out our normalization constant, a n being 1 over square root of n factorial. And we have found this out. I hope you could follow everything I said. If you couldn't, please let me know, and I will tell you a bit more about this procedure right here. I hope you did enjoy my little bonus video right here. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, link to my Patreon is in the description. And up until the next video, have a, um, I don't know, a University of Potsdam day. See ya.
Hey, you look this one.